everyone and welcome to the return of Sketchbook Sundays. Sketchbook Sundays is a more relaxed video where we talk, do tutorials and of course we touch on the topic of the day. Today I'm going to be talking about mermaids. I get a lot of questions on how I draw mermaids and I thought it'd be fun to give you a few tips and tricks. Now I've been taking part in mermaid this year and I've really really enjoyed it. Don't worry there is a sketchbook tour coming up very very soon but I have a lot of questions and a lot of like people asking how do I draw mermaids and I thought I'd give you a few tips and tricks on how I particularly draw mermaids myself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our sketchbook out. Now this sketchbook is very very loved, it has a lot of doodles in there but I thought I'd go on and show you how I draw mermaids. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to draw your torso. Now now your torso in question you can make it as big as you want as skinny as you want it is absolutely fine but you're going to want to make your torso as you would a normal human so to speak you're going to want your your shoulders to your uh, waist to your hips now the the hips is normally where I start drawing a tail and when I think of tails I think of shapes you're going to want to think of the movement of a fish tail um, I recommend looking up quite a few videos on different fish and how they move but you're almost thinking of it as an extension of the spine and I almost like to do little wavy shapes so you can see here that we've got this lovely hook like shape and at the end of this hook we're going to want to put our tail or our rudder so to speak and this will help the mermaid move um, when you've put your rudder down you're going to want to then extend that shape going up to the top here that's how I would draw the typical mermaid tail typical mermaid tail has one fin at the end up to the extension here but I don't have the tail end here I actually extend the scales all the way up the body this is because I think of when you have a mermaid or when you have like a sort of like fish scale um, sort of like a uh, creature I like to think that the scales extend all across the body not just on the bottom half itself I like to think that they extend up that there isn't just a definite line that ends where the hips are. I like to actually extend it up. I think this makes it feel a little bit more supernatural in a way, makes it feel a little bit more um, creature-esque than just being a normal mermaid. I like to extend the scales all the way up. So I do the same with any torso. Let's start with a torso like this. You're going to want to think of movement. Um, a good rule of thumb is when you are thinking of drawing, you're going to want to always think of the drawing as moving. Whenever we think of a drawing as moving or having some movement to it, it allows us to extend our possibilities and allows the drawing to change and uh, elaborate itself, um, if that makes any sense. Um, I always like to think of stuff as moving in a drawing, mainly because I think it gives it more interesting looks overall. If you're going to want to do one swimming, you're going to want the tail to be down because you're going to want that extension of movement. Always think of the mermaid as moving. When you have a mermaid that's like stood up, so say like um, you want the tail to be down, it looks too stiff. If you're just doing it straight down so if you're going to want a tail that's straight down I recommend um, curving it slightly because that allows so much more movement and gives so much more interest to the body shape itself also think of the arms as always moving as well they're going to want to be swimming even if they're stopped to be swimming um, it's the same with fish when they're stood still their fins are always moving they're always uh, like swimming in a way um, so once you've done your standard tail, I like to add extra fins. And the reason why I like to add extra fins on the body itself is because I think it makes it look a little bit more interesting than just the standard tail. Um, fish don't just have one fin at the end. They have their little side fins, which act as their um, rudders to be able to move. So I also like to add that onto mermaids because I think it adds a little bit more flavour than just the standard tail. Um, 
it's the same when you are thinking of like if you're going to do the torso as well I always like to give the torso a little bit of a bend um, this is because I think it just adds that little extra um, to the overall shape itself um, if you want to do a mermaid sitting down yet again think of that extension of the tail think about how that tail is moving you're almost going to think of it as a whole shape within itself you don't want it to be too stiff because when you draw a mermaid's tail when it's too stiff it doesn't look like it's flowing it doesn't look like it's moving and that's the same interaction that we have with all of these so as for making your mermaids interesting there are plenty of ways that you can do this you can extra extra fins in areas i like to add like little elf ears which are like um gills in a way or frilly like fins i just think that looks a lot more interesting as well also with the hair if the mermaid is underwater hair flows very beautifully underwater it's always got a shape to it it um, ripples with the water and has its own effect. If they're streamlined swimming, the hair is going to streamline along with that line of action that you are choosing. Um, if you've got a mermaid like this and then the hair is like this, um, it looks so stiff it doesn't add anything to it. But if then say you add that little bit of an extra flow to it, almost as if the water is moving with the hair as well as the tail and everything like that once you have your beautiful line of action you can really play around with it as for mermaids when they're out of the water their hair is always wet um so you can have it say they've been sat sunbathing on a rock and their hair would be fluffy it would behave very differently than it is in water so if i have a mermaid that's sat out of the water i like to try and give them very wet hair as if they've just come out of the water and they're sitting on the rock or if they're sat underneath the water the hair would flow up it just adds that little bit extra that would give that mermaid so much more life um these are just like standard rules that i go by i always like to think of the movement i like to think of the shape and i also like to think of whether or not that character is moving flowing what kind of reaction would the rest of their body be having um it's almost one of those that when you are thinking about your shapes when you are thinking about how to extend the body in uh, interesting ways you're thinking about if this is silhouetted does it look good as well as if you want to extend the tail. Now a lot of people go by the rules of thumb that the tail should be longer than legs should be because it gives that um, elongated shape to it. I always imagine that a tail would be bigger um, than its head and its torso and bigger than a normal leg would be because you would need a lot of power to be able to swim. Um, yet again we are living in fantasy based worlds so anything could go uh, this way um but if you are thinking about that movement as well um you can really do interesting things with tails you can have tails that are scarred tails that are long and thin like an eel try and look at different fish and how those fish tails are there's some really interesting mermaid designs out there and some really different fascinating things that you could really utilize and make your own i think it's really fast i love mermaid i love mermaid because i like seeing how different people approach the same thing but i always think as well like with these drawings if you especially if you're doing a standalone spot illustration when you add that little bit of movement, it helps a drawing so, so much. It can really be the difference between a drawing being stiff and a drawing having life. Um, and that's what I seem to think of when I'm drawing my mermaids. Is this mermaid moving? How are they moving? How does this shape flow? So you're thinking about, I always think of swirls and shapes and how stuff can move and be um, very interesting in a certain way. You've always got to think of it as an animation still. How can I make this drawing from a little moment feel so full of life? 
I really hope that these tips have helped in somewhat shape or form. Um, I know these drawings are a little bit loose, but I hope that they give you some form of idea on how to um, make your mermaid drawings feel like they have so much more life. Think of that tail. How can you make that movement seem real? Um, think of like the extension of the body and how can you always make it feel like it's moving. These will really help improve not only drawing mermaids, but drawing in general. Always think of movement and how you can improve that. I hope you have really enjoyed this video. Maybe subscribe if you wish to see more content up on this channel. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, wish you all the best and stay creative.